All right, guys, we're going to jump right into it on this episode. I'm going to tell you that by the end of this episode, you're going to be in complete disamazement. Trust me. I mean, you should know, whenever I show up in my bibs with a slick Oklahoma shirt and a Texas Longhorns hat and a chick flick teal bandana on, you know something is up, right? So let's start with the most important things first. The matchbook of the episode is... The Chi Chi Club. That's right. The Chi Chi Club on Catalina Island. Moving this back slow so it doesn't freak up the focus. And the Chi Chi Club on Catalina Island. I don't know what they do there, but that sounds like a cool place, right? So let's move on with coolness. This episode is one of those episodes about... I go out, I find a junky guitar that nobody wants, it's in the island of guitars nobody wants, sitting in the corner, sitting in a window, getting all sun faded, hiding out at a yard sale. Anyway, I get this and take my very limited, almost non-existent, rented lips, existent lutherism skills and try to make something out of it. And this one is going to be a good one. We are going to meet people. I mean, it's been an awesome week. I had the newspaper out here talking to me. Um, it's like things are blowing up, and my success in this has been completely organic. Not like California organic, just regular. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's get started by looking at the guitar that I found, and then I'm going to catch up with you a little bit later. And... Uh, we'll close this out. You're going to love this. Let's go to, I don't know. Let's just go. All right, let's start off having a look at the front and back of this one. We're going to call this one the Texas Junk Pile. Last one was Mississippi Junk Pile. We're going to stick with that Junk Pile theme. Now, what what's up with Junk Pile? Well, back in the old days when I used to move drilling rigs in the Anadarko Basin for Bill Jackson Rig Company. Isn't that not the coolest patch you've ever seen? Anyway, used to run winch trucks for them and we would move these rigs up in the Panhandle of Texas that were way beyond their time, been welded together. You'd pick off bottom and your drill string would make the derrick squat and they were just way past their time. So that's kind of a term of endearment, but um, this thing is going to blow up on you or anything, but yeah, it's seen its day. So let's take a closer look. All right, we got our chick flick teal pointer here. Can't live without one of these. And we are going to take a real close look now. Um, it has a truss rod, but no truss rod cover. Uh, no tuners, but the holes are good. There's no cracks or anything along here on the other side. Um, there's no nut, so I'm going to have to make a nut. But this fretboard looks good. You want to check along here to make sure that there's no cracks or anything like that. Especially where it comes together here. This piece right here is separate from the neck. So if you start seeing stress cracks right here, that means that this is starting to break loose right here. This neck seems to be okay right here. Everything's fine here. Um... I don't know what somebody was thinking. This is like some flower child stuff. That's got to go away. And sorry, Mousy, I don't know what you are, but I got to get you to go away too without messing up the finish. Now, it's got these fret markers, so I don't know about my typical matchbook, and I may leave this alone, but there are no pickups. Both pickups have been removed. We'll see what we do with that. It's got F-holes. It's got pretty F-holes. God, I love F-holes. It's got a switch right here that I won't be using. It's got some other holes here that I won't be using. It's got a couple potentiometers and some wiring left over, but that's about it. It is, yeah, it's a junk pile, but it's pretty solid. The body's okay. So the next time you see this, it's going to be very different. So capture that in your brain. All right, I'm back. And you know it's going to be good because I got the chick flick teal pointer. Now, some people write me messages and I, you don't think I hear you, but I do. Uh, for example, some people tell me that this light back here, it being on, distracts from the overall quality of the show. 
Well, sometimes I have that light on on purpose. It's called the Manfred Mann effect. So if I had this light on, you are blinded by the light. That way you didn't get to see this guitar behind me because it was already done when I shot what you thought was the opening of the episode. See, sometimes I got to admit it. I admitted it in confession already, so don't you worry about absolving me. But at the end of the day, I shoot these episodes after I find out what's going on what's going to happen with the guitar, it turns out a total failure, which I certainly am not used to. That would be a first for me in any field or endeavor that I uh, choose to go into. But anyway, you can go ahead and think I'm psychic and that I shoot the episode knowing what's going to happen, but whatever. So let's get our pointer out and let's take a look at this fine specimen here. All right, guys, time for the big reveal, but I do need you to watch your step. Because we're going into Coveter's Paradise, and I don't want you to go into some psychological breakdown from wanting this thing. We're going to look at the back first. Look at that finish. There's a little bit of wear where it's been on people's knees over the years. There's a strap button right here that I didn't take out, but I'm certainly not going to use that. Um, instead, I put a piece of sash cord up here, kind of cowboy motif, and... Uh, and I like that up there. We'll see that from the front but the back. We've got these vintage tuners with some L Chick Flick teal everywhere and Tammy Signature now. All right, guys, let's look at the front here. I think it turned out pretty nice. Get a little bit of that dust off of there. It come a long ways. Anyway, let's start off at the bottom here. This tailpiece is new. Um, I had to rebuild this because there had been tail pieces on this before. You could see a bunch of holes down there. Anyway, I did an episode called Tore Up Tail Piece that showed how we did this and how we reinforced this from uh, the inside out. And there's an episode link right up there with that eyes popping up right now. Tore Up Tail Piece. You want to see that. We put a floating bridge with thumb screws on it like usual. I got some scrap metal from an old mine around here and did what I needed to do to make this look like it's old and wore out or whatever. Uh, there's a piezo behind there about this big around sitting right underneath there and that is actually a license plate that you would put on a bicycle that came in a Wheaties box in 1953. Uh, and I got the gold foil up here and um, same thing. Of course, we always have to use chick flick teal. That's right. And then there is this Texas Star. It's actually a sound hole cover I got from Michael Breedlove at over, over MGB Guitars. Put a piece of that metal behind it. Put this over the top of it. I warped this by boiling it and then shaping it to the form of the guitar. Remember that old mouse sticker that was hiding underneath here? Uh, somebody patched where there used to be a switch. Anyway, that's covered up there. Um, there's a lot of holes here that we didn't use anymore because there was controls. There was a switch here and a couple tone controls. Now you want to remember, as usual, I've got an input jack for... Uh, the coil and one for the piezo and separate volume controls. So what ends up happening is we turn down uh, the coil here. Let's turn up the piezo. It's this one. And that picks up all that rustic 1940s sound. Um, and then the coil on it sounds pretty good. So, again, people ask me questions why you do this. You hook these up to two separate amps, whatever you want. You can use wireless pickups, and you can get a lot of different sounds by adjusting the volume on this thing. So, anyway, we're, we got that Florentine cutout. I really like that. Going up the neck, we got a lot of Texas matchbooks, oil field stuff. The light's going bad there, but the headstock is a map of Texas. Again, a piece of this metal from the mine with some chick flick teal screws. Got them vintage tuners, and then we've got a Texas Longhorn medallion up there. So I kind of like the way this turned out. I think it sounds good and looks really good. <laughs>
what y'all think about that, huh? So, um, now that we got this thing back together, and you can hear that it plays, and you know that it's awesome, right? And you know that you're coveting it, right? We know that. Anyway, let's hit the road, and let's go, number one, see, well, I don't even know what's going to happen. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I already did it, but let's just pretend, right? Let's go. Guys, we are headed back to the guitar store that we got the Texas Junk Pile from before it became the Texas Junk Pile. And we're going to show a couple of other our guitars, and Tammy's good enough to carry one with us. Hey, Tam, say hi. There she is. Love you, Tam. Oh, cool. Oh, you got a cool knack for doing this stuff, my friend. You did a good job on that. That is so nice. Beautiful. That just really came out nice. Look at you. <laughs> Isn't this different here, too, with this? Oh, I love that. I always love that. That This was a great guitar to start with. Yeah. Um, and it was just putting pieces on it, covering up a few blemishes or calling them out for what they were. That is really sweet. Hey, that was pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I guess again. I got something really cool. Um, first thing that's really cool is you're going to check out uh, below and you're going to give me a like on the way down um, because I don't want you distracted. This right here is going to be awesome, dudes, and, and whatever. Anyway, so I'm out there in Ventura and I run into somebody. It just completely kind of by chance I'm out looking for pickups and parts and whatever and I run across this dude and I end up showing him this guitar and he ends up playing it and he'd never seen it before never I don't know he I told him it's got a it's got a piezo and a coil and then he played, I plugged it into the amp I just happened to have with me, right? Got a little rolling damp, check those out. And maybe I'll give you a link below. Anyway, this guy starts playing the guitar. And it's obvious he's really good. And then I pull out the Cobalt Blue Slide that I know y'all covet. And said, have you ever used one of these? And he goes right to town on it. And I'm hearing Mississippi, Fred McDowell, maybe John Henry for sure and uh, maybe some Elmore James. So anyway, the guy plays it. He tells me his name. As soon as I get home, I start checking this guy out. And it, it turns out his name's Frank Goldwasser. Frank Goldwasser. And uh, more commonly known as Paris Slim. Now, if you got if you got slim in your name, you're you're just one level off of being slick, right? But anyway, turns out this guy was from France, about 14 years old. He started listening to the old blues players, and he's a standard in the American blues scene. Um, and I'm going to give you a link right up there that I popping up there. You want to see this video? Um, it's kind of it starts off. The video is kind of art itself, but you got to listen to this guy play. This is the kind of stuff we like. So once you're done watching Frank, I'm going to give you a, a little clip of him doing the piezo and the coil on this thing and then using a the slide. I really need you to get down at the bottom there and find uh, the links uh, to Frank's music and then you order it right away. Okay? And you tell me something about it. I'm going to pick one of y'all out. Uh, and uh, send you something. You got to send me an email and tell me what you think of Frank's music. And I'll pick one of y'all out uh, at my discretion. There is no contest police here. I'll just pick one of you out and I'll send you, you know, my care packages are awesome. So anyway, 
Enjoy Frank down below and give me a like and I will see you next time.